We cross the Mediterranean and arrive in Tunisia. Immediately we see we have left Europe and have arrived in Africa. Hi, I'm Len Rutledge and here at Experience Guides we want to show you some of the attractions of Tunis. The port is about 12 kilometres east of the city. This is the capital and largest city in Tunisia. As we approach, we see signs of a very modern city. The Avenue of France could be in Europe, and there are many reminders of French occupation. At the end of the avenue is the gate to the old city. This leads to Victory Square and the entrance to the Tunis Medina. The Medina has been a World Heritage Site since 1979. Originally founded around 700 BC, the Medina has grown over the years to now have an area of 270 hectares and a population of 110,000. In many ways, the Medina is a city within a city. It contains houses, shops, other businesses, mosques, palaces, mausoleums, restaurants, and so on. This is inside an old school, which was part of the mosque and taught people. Most of the Medina consists of covered streets and there are limited open spaces. Shops spread out into the street and there is little concept of individual ownership. A highlight for many visitors is the existence of some lovely restaurants. On the north side of the Medina, there are government buildings and an open space. It is a complete contrast to inside. Casbah Square has the National Monument, the Town Hall and other buildings. We now leave the central area and travel through the suburbs as we head to Carthage. This was one of the most affluent cities of the classical world. It developed from a Phoenician colony into the capital of the Punic Empire. The old city was destroyed by the siege of Carthage by the Roman Republic around 140 BC. It was redeveloped a century later as Roman Carthage. A highlight on Bursa Hill today is the Cathedral of St. Louis of Carthage and the adjacent Carthage National Museum.
It's now time to move on to one of the most charming areas of Tunis. Known for its cobble streets and blue and white houses, it is a charming place on a promontory overlooking the Mediterranean. It has souvenir stores, al fresco cafes, Tunisian eateries and small art galleries. The central area can be very touristy, but there is no doubt about the attractiveness of the architecture. Our final visit is to the Roman Baths of Antoninus. These were the largest on the African continent and were in a sublime seaside setting. They were built between 145 and 165 AD and are a fitting farewell to this very interesting city. Tunis has a good range of hotels, some interesting cuisine and attractive restaurants. It is a good place to visit.